the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. On the trail from Stove Pipe, a group of high rocks concealed the entrance to a deep cave. Ho! Oh, ho, you Malamutes! Well, after we get these furs into the cave, I'll shove back to the city. Yeah. The boss will send someone along to pick them up. <coughs> well, it's a quicker way to get rich than working with a pick. <laughs> Listen, I've seen more gold in these last two years than a miner sweating over his claim. None of that stuff for me. Yep. Slim pays off all right, but it'd be a bad man to cross. There's only one answer to that one, Brent. You're smart, you don't cross him. Yep. Remember what happened to Lefty? I never did hear that story straight. <coughs> Got some more furs in the sled. Yeah. Last I heard was he got hung for Pop Johnson's murder. <laughs> Lefty didn't have no more to do with Pop Johnson's murder than you had. Huh? Here, you dropped a beaver pelt. Yeah, put it on top. Uh, this is the last of the batch. Who oh, say? All anybody knows, Lefty thought he was getting too big for the gang. Yeah? He was all set to strike out in his own, pull a couple of jobs, and leave the Yukon. What happened? All I know is the Mountie got it for murder, and he swung a week later. <coughs> Slim heard he was aiming to talk. How come he got hung so soon after he was caught? Yeah, that's a funny part of it. Two or three hours after someone brought Slim the news and left he was going to rat on him to save his head, left he was found in his cell. Hanging? Nobody knows to this day how it happened. Not even the Mountie to put the handcuffs on him. And nobody had the keys to the who's got. They had to get in some way. The only one's got the answer to that is Slim. And he don't say much. Yeah, right there. Well, our job's done. Yeah, I'll ride back to Stove Pipe. You stay here till one of the boys comes to pick up this load. He ought to be along, sir. Won't have long to wait. I'll get some... Hey. What's wrong? Look, out there on the trail. Maybe one of the boys. Not riding that trail, it ain't. Be coming from the north if it was. We better get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we can get behind these rocks. It's a Maori. He must have followed the tracks. Get your gun, Mac. Don't worry, I'm ready. Then let him have it. Take a run for the rocks, King. He spotted us. That was too close. Yeah, I'm going to make a break for it. Hey, what do you mean? How am I going to... Get the slim. He'll take care of you. Cover me, do you hear? Bad wound. King, bring me my kit. Where, where are you taking me, Monty? That's it, fella. All right, back to stovepipe. As soon as we get this fixed up. And I want to look inside that cave. No. Uh, Easy there. And I wouldn't reach for that gun. King's keeping a close eye on you. No? Hey, you. Say, I'll go along, piece of Sorry. Up. Now, King, you watch him while I go inside the cave. You won't be calling the cars along, Monty. Is this your hideout? <laughs> With all the answers you got, how come that one ain't in your book? His partner wouldn't have hit the trail so quickly. Well, stolen pelts. Every last one of them. Marked with a K. And these are Dan Kelly skins. They must have just stored them here. <laughs> Stovepipe boasted one of the few newspapers in the North. 
edited by Jim Armstrong. The language of its editorials was often more strong than correct, but it was geared to the needs of the men who read it and crusaded always for law, order, and justice in the Yukon. Sergeant Preston and his prisoner rode into stovepipe just as oil lamps were being lighted. Okay. Oh, you have to. All right, Mac, come on. What's your hurry, Monty? I want to ask you some questions. <laughs> questions usually got to have answers. Hey there, Sergeant Preston. Well, hello, Jim. How is everything at the Clarion? Quiet. Too quiet. Well, who's your prisoner? Mac Wiley. Yeah? What are you jailing for? Stealing furs. Stealing furs, eh? Who's? Dan Kelly's, as far as I know now. All right, in there, Mac. You can take these handcuffs off now, can't you? Yes, I suppose so. Say, you sounded like you thought there was more behind this than meets the eye, Sergeant. Yes, I think there is. Yeah, mind if I stay around a while? <laughs> Always the newspaper man, huh, Jim? Shucks. Got to print something or the boys will run me out of town. No chance of them running you out of town. But stay if you like. You might find it interesting. I wouldn't count on that, Monty. Yeah. <sighs> Say. I ain't answering any questions, see? You can keep me locked up here for any charges you think of. You mean you'll serve a jail sentence before you... This don't make sense. Maybe it does make sense. What are you afraid of? Your partner won't be able to get you out. I ain't talking. It might go easier with you. Listen. To... I ain't signing my own death warrant. What kind of a fool do you think I am? Think I want to be found hanging from the ceiling in the morning? Not me. Hanging from the ceiling? You heard me. Go on. Ask me anything you want. <laughs> if you like talking to yourself. Do you mean Lefty Watson? Well, that looked like suicide. You Monty's ain't so smart. Lefty committing suicide. That's a laugh. The boss got... I ain't saying anymore. Who is the boss? No one could have hung Lefty. <laughs> All night long, Preston and Jim Armstrong fired questions at the outlaw. But after his one slip, mentioning the boss, Mac refused to say more. As the hours wore on, the light flickered on his tired, lined face. But his resolution was not to be shaken. A few hours before daybreak, the sergeant and Jim left him. I'd say that was a mighty scared man. Yes, indeed. The boss. You know, Jim, I have a hunch this is the gang behind most of the robberies in this part of the north. Robberies and murders? They've been stealing gold and furs for a long time now. If we could get Wiley to tell us what he knows... There might be a way to reach him. What do you mean? Listen, Jim. Do just as I tell you. The next morning, as Sergeant Preston sat behind his desk in the jail... Well, you're up early, Jim. Yeah, had to get the paper out. Brought you over a copy. Oh, thanks. I'm releasing my prisoner this morning. Releasing him? Yes, lack of evidence. All right, Mac. You mean I'm free? Yes. But let me give you one tip. If I catch up with you again, you'll stay behind bars a long time. Well, so long, Mr. Editor. Oh, we'll be seeing more of each other. You see the clearing yet? I never read any papers. Besides, I'm in a hurry. You made the news this time. Yeah, well, you... What? Sure. Read it. Captured by Sergeant Preston, Mac Wiley told this writer and the sergeant of the leader of a gang... Hey. Makes good news, don't it? I didn't say anything Well, like... if I told him the truth, wouldn't be nothing exciting there. I'll say escape from jail in the next one. Hey, Monty, you can't let him do this to me. Jim Prince, what he wants to. Sure. Ain't you ever heard of freedom of the press? <laughs> no, I guess you wouldn't have. I didn't talk. I didn't. Now this, this says I did. He won't believe me. I won't have a chance, I tell you. You're a free man. Go on out and square it with your gang yourself. No, oh, I can't. They'd shoot me on sight. Monty, lock me up. Lock you up? Mac, I just told you. Yeah, free. yeah, I know. But you got it. You got to lock me up. I tell you, they'll kill me if you don't. They might even... Uh, I'm done for, I guess. That's all your fault. You've done this. Now, wait a minute. There might be a way out of this for you. What? Give me the names of the men in the gang. I can almost call their list of crimes. 
But I need your help, Mac. And captured, they can't do you any harm. <laughs> captured? You'd like that, wouldn't you, Monty? A nice feather in your hat. Besides, they'd get me anyway. Well, if that's the way you want it. I don't want it anyway. You got me into this, Preston. You got to help me out. I can't do anything, Mac. Without evidence, my hands are tied. How fast will that paper get around? Oh, don't have enough copies for everybody. One man passes his along to the next fellow. What if I... If I give you the evidence you want? If you do that, the whole gang will be behind bars by sundown. Well, I guess there ain't anything else to do. Huh. One way or the other, I can't win. You'll find Slim at the cabin, three miles west of Skeleton Creek. Following Mac's directions, Sergeant Preston and Jim headed for the hideout, the great dog king breaking tracks through the snow. With the advantage of surprise, they prepared to take a stand against six desperate men. The sun had already gone down behind a line of somber pine trees as the Mountie pulled his sled into the protection of a group of rocks. We'll leave the dogs here, huh? I think if we go from here on snowshoes, it'll be better. You're right. You suppose he got someone on guard? Hard to tell from here. All I can make out is a cabin... But by keeping in the shadow of those pine trees, we should be safe enough. All right, King, old boy. Come on. What now? To the back of the cabin. Max said there's a door there. What if he was lying? The violet might have We've been coming. this far, Jim. And so to the back of the small cabin, the two men crept. The great dog, King, soundlessly hugging his master's footsteps, every muscle tense, ready for the conflict to come. The outlaws, feeling secure, had long since forgotten to bolt the wood door the two men now silently faced. The Mountie pushed it quietly, and to Jim's astonishment, it swung on its hinges. They entered a darkened room, shutting the door behind them. They're all in the next room. They ain't... Oh! Well, you come in with your hands up, whoever you are. We're coming in, all right, but not with our hands up. That's two out. Got him, King. Get away, Get away. All right. All right. All right, King. Good work, fella. Better handcuff a lot of them, Jim. You ain't got nothing on us. That's right. That's wrong. I've got all the evidence against you I need, Slim. <laughs> yeah? Yes. We persuaded Mac Wiley to give us a few details we didn't have. <laughs> Mac? Wait till the boys see the paper I roll out when we get back to Stovepipe. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Sergeant. It was a mighty smart trick faking that copy of the Clarion. Without you and King here to help, these boys might still be free, Jim. All right. You might tell your men, Slim, that they have a long trip in front of them. A one-way trip. You heard the Sergeant. Get going. <laughs> Yes, King. The case is closed. Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the Great Dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again on Saturday at 6.30. One king! On you husky! Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, Brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.